Welcome to the show, which was Elder Law with Frank and Mary, but which we're changing. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. And with me is my good friend, Shelby Marshall, who has been on the show before. Uh, and we're going to talk about what is happening specifically in Westboro around Westboro's efforts to become dementia friendly. So first of all, quickly, so we've, I've always called this show Elder Law, Frank and Mary, although I never talked about law. I always interviewed people like Shelby and other people that I thought that you as a senior, whom I thought you as a senior should know about uh, here in Westboro. So I decided really what this show is about, has become about is my friends Frank and Mary. I think I'm pointing to the right person. I've never used a green screen before. That's that. So, and so we're calling the show Frank and Mary in Westboro. And the point of the show is that like Frank and Mary, you, you too probably have a lot of concerns about making sure that you can live in your house until you die, be buried in the backyard like many of my clients, like Frank and Mary, uh, or lives and stay here in Westboro even if you start getting a little confused and your memory isn't so great, you know? And that's one of the purposes behind having a dementia-friendly community. So, as you know, um, Shelby, um, it, Shelby's day job is she, the, she and her partner actually have a home care agency right at home, right here in, in, uh, yep. in Westboro, but also Shelby, and, and so she's uniquely aware of these issues, but also Shelby became a selectman I this did. year. Yep. Top the ticket, congratulations. Thank you very that's much. Great. Um, and really decided that, of course, that was one of the things she wanted to focus on. And Shelby had been very involved in the Dementia Friendly Community uh, Committee here in Westboro that was studying the, the, the needs in the community and developing recommendations. So I thought that, first of all, Shelby will be joining me, um, hopefully for all of these shows, for whenever she can come. Um, we plan that to invite additional guests as long as they can fit between us. They have to be thin. <laughs> well, we're going to know no big guests here. Um, and they're all going to be people either who are here in Westboro working on pieces of this initiative or, or, or who are from other communities doing things that Westboro may be wanting to look yeah, at. Absolutely. That's, that's kind of the goal of all of this, right? Copying is the greatest form of flattery. Copying right? is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Right. We, I, lawyers, you, you know, the, every time I bring someone's documents to them, right. they say, you just wrote this for me? I say, well, no, no. <laughs> so, Shelby, t could yes, you sir. just talk about kind of where you are in all of this and where you feel that the town is on all of this, um, what the initiatives are that you think you want to be advancing mm -hmm. over the next year, mm -hmm. right? And then, if you can talk even a little bit of to how people can get involved as you go through those sure. initiatives. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Um, so. And any new things that have happened, like the lieutenant governor being here yesterday, to be it's quite a day yesterday. Yeah. So um, we have we undertook the as a community. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really a grassroots effort, and I think that's what certainly I want the viewers to understand is that this community is... Community not a state effort, it's not a... No, this is West no, it's Bros. not even... Yeah. I mean, it's not even sort of the... It's not even initiating out of town hall. Uh, this is a, a, a group of in, individuals who are citizens, who are part of our municipal government, who are part yeah. of our school system, who are business owners, who are uh, just interested in understanding and are passionate about making sure that Westboro is a friendly place to age in. And our focus right now is on dementia, but I certainly envision it that it, it expands beyond that over time. But that's that's for our next series. Right, because right. dementia is a great is just a subset. What's one of the unique things about an aging population is mm -hmm. what a large percentage of them. Right. Are either either have memory issues or at least are really worried about them. Right. It's one of the things about being older. Certainly, I see it with my clients all the time. Sure. you're worried about this stuff. Right, right. exactly. So, so this uh, committee formed uh, just over a year ago, and right. I actually can't take credit for forming the committee. Actually, the committee itself um, spawned out of an initiative through Bay Path Elder Services, uh, which is our area access aging point. And um, a team of folks there actually went to Minnesota. Aging Services Access. This is legal. Yes. Right. Oh, you, yes. Aging Services Access Point. A ASAP. 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 You got to have an acronym, right? right? Got to have an acronym, right? So uh, they're based in Marlboro, and they service uh, I, I don't 20, know, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 yeah. something. Yep. So a number of towns, and their team Oops. actually. Oh. <laughs> Fourteen. Fourteen. Sorry. I knew. I thought it was less, yeah. but I wasn't going to. Yeah. You know, no, on air, yeah, I'm right? supposed to know this All stuff. Right. No, it's, no, no. Okay. So, so you can see this is well rehearsed. Exactly. And these people are watching it and we're really well rehearsed. It. Okay, go, go ahead. So a team from Bay Path went out to Minnesota because Minnesota was the initial America uh, American model on 
dementia friendly. So they went out, they studied it, they met with folks, and then they basically brought that program back here to Massachusetts. Right. So the by first the way, part of that team was me. I actually went. Oh, well, you know, I don't think I realized that. Yes, well, yes, see, again, yes. very well rehearsed. My here. Michael Connell actually paid for part of that trip. <laughs> wow. Because oh. we were very, I was really interested. Sure. I thought this was a good we, idea. Right? No, great. Okay, yeah. so, yeah. and I really didn't know that, so yeah. that was not rehearsed. Yes. So, uh, at any rate, um, that program came back, and of course, the lead, the communities that started at first, Marlboro, um, Hudson, and Northboro. So they sort of got, they were the first out of the shoot. And then Westboro followed along, and uh, George Barrett, who is a former selectman here, has been very active in the town has lived here for many years he really led that charge for our town and yeah. so he really started it and started to formulate the group and then actually that's how I was invited to participate and that um, was a pretty big group right if I yeah recall absolutely absolutely and it, and it was a again an inter interdisciplinary group from the beginning and so it encompassed our senior center uh, council and aging director Alma Demange our assistant town manager Christy Williams representatives from the police and fire department um, yeah. Um, uh, your, our your superintendent, yeah. uh, Amber Bach. The, uh, there were several individuals who are seniors themselves who uh, have a variety of roles, are involved in civic organizations, volunteer at the uh, Council on Aging, etc. Yeah. And so we all got together and said, well, what is this dementia-friendly thing and how can we help? Right, and there were healthcare professionals as part of it as well. Yeah. So, and, and especially you think in ways that are unique to Westboro. Right, 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 exactly. They so, may apply other places, but they really work. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, and so, this whole concept of d becoming dementia friendly isn't sort of to your point. Isn't like here's the box and you open the toolkit and and you just do that. It really is about discovering what is right for your community because what works in Marlboro may not work in Westboro, and so on and so forth. So we started meeting over a year ago and. And we, um, as part of the um, um, process, we had surveys. So we sort of did, there were several different phases of the, the program, if you will. And one was to sort of convene a group and sort of say, okay, here's what it is. And then we went out and did surveys. We surveyed over 80 entities in our um, community comprised of religious organizations, uh, municipal uh, uh, departments, yeah. businesses, um, um, Some healthcare professionals, healthcare professionals yeah. and civic organizations, and and there's a series of questions basically sort of asked, what do you know about this uh, disease, if you will, yeah. and then what would you like to have, um, what would you like to know more about? So, and, and is there a need? So the questions really, regardless of the entity you're interviewing, yeah. uh, were pretty much the same. And what we came back with was. In, in spite of the variety of folks that, and entities we interviewed, was the same. Folks wanted education. They wanted to know if someone with, it seems for lack of a better word, a little bit off, something's not right, you know, yeah. they're confused. What, what do, do I do? do? What, do, what I do? do I do? How do I interact? Who do I call? Yeah. You want to do um, the right thing. You don't want to make it ex right. Exactly. Right. And and um, and then the other piece was where are there any safe spaces? Mm -hmm. So so not just in that instant, but if I'm a caregiver, I'm a you know my let's say I'm with my mom, and where can we go that's a safe space? Someone that's going to understand us and not necessarily really treat us differently, just treat us like we're regular. Just but it's going to be, um, the, the, not only is it a safe, but an accepting space. Because the last thing you want to do is stick up. Right, right. Because right. I already wants, do, right? Nobody because, wants to be, yeah, and who right, wants to be embarrassed, right? Right, right? exactly. Right, it's your exactly. hometown, right? right you know right. a lot of people, yeah. Right. So, um, so anyway, and, and I have to tell you is I went out and did several of the surveys myself. Yeah. Uh, and I, I really thought folks would be like, you know what? That's very nice, but we're not interested in filling out your survey. And, there, and, and my experience was uniform across the others of our, our committee that completed the 80 surveys. Everyone was interested. Absolutely, we'll sit down and fill it out. Yeah. And yes, we're interested. Yes, we care about this. So this was great. This was across, again, town departments, salons, uh, grocery stores, convenience stores, uh, churches, et cetera. So, so there's an interest. And, right. you know, because we know that statistically it's probably about 1 in 10 over the age of 80 are experiencing some level of cognitive decline, right. regardless of whether there's a diagnosis. And so just about everybody that you were surveying knew somebody, yeah, whether it was right, a relative or a right, friend or, or somebody. An employee or and they're like, oh yeah, I, I've yeah, gone through that. Yeah, right, 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 exactly. So we did the surveys and then the surveys were, uh, the data was um, co um, analyzed, yeah. if you will, by Bay Path Elder Services and that was through a grant with a, through the Metro West Health Foundation. They sort of supported the staffing basically to coordinate it. Yeah. And 
Then um, the data, we brought back the data. We said, so what does it tell us about Westboro? So I'm just refer to my, right. my notes here. Yeah, you know. So from that, we came up with a mission statement and and then sort of objectives from there. So our mission because statement. Because you continued to have this core group of really interested absolutely. people. Absolutely. Right. So, and we right. met about once a month. So yep. just for context for our uh, listeners. So our mission statement that we came up with was that, was that dementia and age-friendly Westboro will promote a community where individuals with dementia and their caregivers will have access to the resources and support they need to safely live, age, and thrive. So there it is, right? So from that, then and we said... who so, wouldn't want to live in that place? Right? Oh, right? right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Um, and so then we said, well, so that's our mission statement. So uh, like, what are our objectives? And so we came up with five objectives, and I'll just briefly go through those. Yeah. So we wanted to identify and deploy and publicize resources, kind of programs, and kind of a toolkit for that educational component. We want to promote the creation of safe and welcoming spaces. We want to promote dementia education and awareness through local media. Thank you, Westboro right TV. Right, right, right. So we're already starting that process. Uh, we want to reach out and engage and partner with local organizations. So it's the committee isn't the committee is just sort of um, like the hub, if you will. But there are lots of different entities who we might partner with, and that leads to the fifth piece, which is partner with the Alzheimer's Association to provide dementia education and training because. You know, we don't have to recreate the wheel here. So, That's so, right. um, That's right. so we're not trying to cure dementia here. Somebody no. else is trying to cure dementia. Right, right. We're trying to help deal with deal with dementia. Right, exactly, exactly. Right. So those were our objectives, and so, um, and then we, um, um, and so that sort of was the outcome. And then we took a little bit of a break because summer came around, and so on and so forth. And yeah. so we've recently reconvened as a group, um, and we took all of those objectives, and started to outline actual projects that people could sort of wrap their our arms and, and minds around right. and actually since we created the objective some of the work has already started which is really the exciting thing about being here today and being able to not only say hey we've done this work we've sort of done the prep work we're already at in some ways implementation right. so um, so I'll, I'll pause there for a moment you might talk, have some questions about but that. yeah so no, I think that's that's a great outline of kind of like of like where things came from right and as, as I mentioned you know, I've been very interested in this, so my Michael Connell's been very mm -hmm. interested in it. And that's why, as I mentioned to you, I said, I, and I've always, I've told my folks at my Michael Connell, I mm -hmm. said, this is something we need to be involved in. Right. We are the biggest law firm in Westboro. There are You're 20 of, here. There were 20 of us here. Right. There were 20, well, there were 40 in Worcester. There's 20 here. Yeah. But that's a lot, you right. know. And, and and so we sh we need to be actively involved yep. in this initiative, Vested, right, right? Which I think is really really absolutely yeah. absolutely. So um, I'll, I'll as time allows here, I'll go through yep. a couple of the projects, and we yep. can talk about those yep. um, as as deep as we want to go at this point. So one of the key pieces is to understand is that. And, and to not reinvent the wheel is that we have a lot of great things happening at our Council on Aging. And so the folks that go there on a regular basis, they probably know about it. But one of the things that I felt very strongly about is that the people that are going there aren't necessarily the ones that need to know about it because they know. Right. It's the adult child that lives in Wellesley or lives in Ohio yeah. or wherever, yeah. right? Yeah. And so how did they know about it? So how are we kind of, so in, in some ways it's a little bit like repackaging and making sure that folks are aware that there's like a menu. So it yeah. might, it, you know, the how, how we might visualize it would be Maybe there's on our town website, and again, we haven't fully vetted all this, but yeah. there might be a tab where it says Westboro is dementia friendly, and you click on that, and then sort of there's a kind of a menu of offerings. Um, oh, that's a great idea. Right. So so somebody, so once again, the child from Ohio could just click on. Right, and right. say, oh, you know, right. mom, mom may be having some memory problems, mm -hmm. you know, or I've been talking to dad about it, and, you know. Yep. And so and what's so going on? And so I want to tell on? dad about and it, I wanna, right? right? Right, dad's struggling. He's like, I don't know where to go, so I've never been or to Or he's in center. denial, or he doesn't right. want to talk Absolutely. to us about it. Right. Oh, Ma's fine. Right. Everything's good. <laughs> right. That never happens, right? Right. So, so for example, some of the great things that are going on already at our, our uh, Council on Aging. Yeah. First of all, the staff at the Council on Aging are trained as certified dementia practitioners. So when you're calling and, and you're talking about this topic, right. you're talking with folks that have been trained and they're informed. So that's important. Or if you're stopping in. Right. right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, there is uh, Westboro launched a Sunshine Cafe. Sometimes they're known as Memory Cafes. So they offer that the second Tuesday of every month. Yeah. So it's a safe place where 
uh, someone can bring someone with memory impairment and it's a social setting it's safe and so on and so forth there's some food there's maybe some activity there could be music what have you so that's like it that's that safe social space we've already talked about and, and it's not a place where you'd be dropping off your loved one no, but you, no. were you staying with your loved one right right so. but you're talking with like so if I'm there with my mom there's a social support element yeah. there yeah. and my mom is also but she's also part of that process right. for example and I'm there and I can also be talking with other folks who are also going through this right and so we can be kind of sharing stories so I'm not starting to feeling like I'm alone right, right. And, and I remember talking to I remember we've, we've talked about this there's a memory cafe in Falmouth mm -hmm. that the state folks have been using as kind of the model yes. it's run by uh, this woman wonderful woman who's a psychologist and that's her day job mm -hmm. right but she said the whole goal of the memory cafe is you want to be feeling like you're at home mm -hmm. memory may not be great you know <laughs> right. but you want to be feeling th that's the point whether there's music whether there's art whether there's whatever it is yeah. And so, and so you're, and you're feeling like you're at home, right. which means you don't have to be on your guard. Right. You don't have to be not talking right. at all, right. Right. or being, you know, being boys just to, to to deal with the fact that you know you have some memory issues. Exactly. You can just be. Right. You can right. just that's exactly. the, wonderful. Exactly. Wonderful. Yeah. So that that exists. One of the programs that I think is fantastic that yeah. folks don't know about it um, is we have residential lock boxes. Talk about. So we this uh, this I think is one of those you know this is like if, a hidden gem. If the point of this and for me a lot of the point of this is is to be being able to share this with other communities because I, I right. go to a lot of communities mm -hmm. and to have because everybody's learning something new Absolutely. and saying oh they look at what they did <laughs> over here that, right? this is really good right right and and this is to me the great the, one of the gems in Westbrook. Sure. Go ahead, go. So so if you imagine sometimes you see these like at a construction site or you know if you're selling a home but the owners yeah. aren't there so sometimes it's known as a realtor's lockbox but it's about this big and two simple screws mounts on a, an appropriate location and and you access it through a secure keypad and there's a key in there what happens is when there's an emergency call I've fallen um, or someone says geez the newspapers are piling up I'm not sure what's going on at my neighbor's house but something's, something's not right, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, or adult child out of town says I can't reach my loved one and they're calling to say I need someone to go out and, right. and make an emergency call so typically our, our fire department are the first responders right yeah. so they're calling the because I would assume you have a joint first responder correct right yes centralized so it's fire, right. that's correct so correct. they're calling that number exactly exactly and, in and your typically case, that's a 911 call yeah. right they're not yeah. just dialing the right. business line and in your case the, the responder is the fire department yes it is yes and so they are do they show up with a fire truck um, they they may, but right. typically that well it depends on the situation. I mean, Chief so Purcell would to speak to that. Jump in. So go, yeah, go no, ahead. no, but typically that's not a light sirens on. It's yeah, they're yeah. showing up. But it, yeah. again, yeah. Chief Purcell, we can have him on and talk about it. Yeah. He would be a great oh, guest. Oh no, by he'd the be way. great. Yeah, maybe he'll be next. Uh, and this is an extension. Actually, I'm not gonna. Well, yeah, let me go, let me. Go, so the lockboxes. So. So first of all, the, there are so many free. things to talk to you, and and you're such a shy person. I, <laughs> but, so I want to make sure we get nice. everything. In. So go go, go nice. ahead, go ahead. So you, are, um, you almost blushed when I said you said I can't believe he really thinks I'm a shy person. Go ahead. So these are first of all, they're free. Yeah. Um, someone from the, the senior center, yeah, will come out and install it. Just, Just because you cruise. say you want one. Right. 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 And they install it, and then what do they put your name like on a list or something? Exactly, and so there's a master key. Yeah. And so instead of when that the fire department comes, instead of breaking down your door, which you know, in lieu of Who someone coming that? to it, right? right. It's Who expensive, what have you? Yeah. Startling. They, <laughs> hello. <laughs> right. We're just checking in. <laughs> Bang. <Whoa>. Right. <laughs> exactly. House call. Um, so uh, they have. Um, there's a master key. Yeah. And what, what I have since learned through, yeah. um, from Chief Purcell and his great team is that a couple of years ago, uh, Westboro invested in its fire trucks, and he'll tell the story better than I do, so yeah. I'm hoping I'm representing yeah. it, in a special uh, entity in all of our, um, um, I'm going to say fire units, so, yeah. um, I think it's both on the ambulances as well, and it's a secure lockbox on the fire truck, and it's an electronic keypad. Yeah. And in order to access the master key that unlocks the lockbox, yeah. they have to key in, like, so it's my identification, yeah, yeah, Shelby yeah. Firefighter 1234. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I open it up, I go into the house, yeah. and, and the truck will continue flashing blue lights until yeah. the key is back into the fire truck. I see, I see. And the keypad is relocked. 
So because people go, oh, who's going to have a key to mom's who's house? Who's going to have a key to right? mom's house? Right. Super secure That's time great. stamp. And I, I honestly just learned this yesterday about that component. So, um, 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 and and again. Here's the other key part is that the fire department staff have been trained. We can touch on that, in a, but they get it, right? They're interacting with these, with these folks all the time. So they've but done you, this this memory memory loss, dealing with folks with memory exactly, loss training. Right, yeah. right. So 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 you have the lock boxes. It interacts with the fire department, yeah. and and the, you're not breaking down the door. And there's a, a name on a list, right? So so that's kind of one of those things that, are, that already exists. Uh, there's great. a program that we have through our senior center. It is limited because of kind of funding and staffing, yep. but it's called Caregiver Meals. So for, for folks that cannot, it's different than um, Meals, Meals on Wheels. On wheels. Yeah. But if folks that cannot get out, they, they can sign up for a Caregiver Meal program. So again, some I of see. it is just like making folks aware, like how would I sign up? I only, you know, maybe I only right. need something for a couple weeks, right? right. It's not right. an ongoing and is there, program. Do I have to show, I'm poor. Do I have to do this, right? right. What's, how, exactly, what's the, like what is it, story? right? Yeah. Right, and then and then we have community outreach staff that can go, you know, Mary Donna and her team go out and... Mary Donna. Yeah, she's what, what's great. Her, what is her last name? This Corcoran. Is Corcoran. Yes. What an amazing resource. Yep. Yep. As and, an and Dennis person. Fenton, he's one of the outreach workers, yep. too. He works particularly with gentlemen. He'll go out and, That's hey, he's got, a, he's got a great voice. I don't know if he brings his guitar, but, you know, he's, he's amazing. So, um, so anyway, so that's kind of just one aspect yep. of what we hope to achieve um, in, again, Really, it's about creating awareness and making that information uh, visible to the public. The other piece is creating a registry. So mm -hmm. Marlboro has done this. Um, yep. And actually, yep. this part is already sort of out of the gate. And um, the fire department actually has already invested in software and a calling system. And I'm not going to kind of go too in-depth because this yep. is going to be rolled out later in the summer. Yep. And I think we should really invite we'll Chief in, Purcell. We'll invite the chief. He can really yep. talk about it. But uh, this is a way where um, uh, someone could self-register. Again, we, it's always with permission yep. so that it's known that, you know, this individual has, um, you know, needs to be looked some after. Mem some memory issues. Right, has exactly. Issues. Right. So there's a registry component there, you know, yeah. and here's the beautiful thing. Police and fire actually can see that file, so it's not like okay, you know, we've heard of someone that might be wandering. Right. Call back, you know. Can you send read read the book? Right. If, go to. And does yeah. this have pictures with it? Yeah, and it, and yeah. they can see it in their cars. And that's so, so good. It's, it's it's so. I was and, actually. And I'm just going to give it do, yeah. do do a story related to that. Yes. In, in it, in, because we've done this we've done this in uh, in Marlboro, mm -hmm. and, and and the uh, and the chief said. One of the things that's so important, it was related to a police stop, right? So I do, I'll go to a police stop because mm -hmm. I'm stopped somebody, mm -hmm. and the person turns out has dementia, mm -hmm. right? And the, but they're still driving, yep. right? But they've yep. got dementia, yep. and and they're and so what your natural reaction if you've got those issues is you get you're really agitated mm -hmm. and aggressive, yep. right? Yep. Which is exactly the way you would be if you were a little drunk or stoned, right? Right. 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 And so I I'm trained as a policeman to deal with drunk and stoned, yep. which is get out of the car. Right. You know, put your hands right. I've exactly. never done that though. The last thing you want to do with someone with dementia, right? <laughs> whereas, whereas with right. if you're on the registry, right. you check the license plate, boom, boom, boom. Oh, here's the picture. Oh, Mr. Bergeron. Yeah. Can I help? You know, can I help you? Yeah. Get, can I help you at home? You yeah. know, yeah. I think your wife was yeah. you know, calling. Yeah. You're feeling okay. Totally that, changes so, things. Right. Exactly. Now, now we're going to have him on. I want you to get to the honoring choices piece, yes. yep. just because Absolutely. I'm getting a feeling that we're getting to the end of our well, time. Because I talk a lot. Because we talk well, a lot. There we go. Because we talk a okay. lot. We'd be terrible at a party. So, this is like talking with one of my sisters. We're like, they never get to a period. Right, right. Everything is just like a comma. And we, then we need our own table service. Yeah. So we keep talking. Okay. So talk about yeah, honoring, honoring choices. choices. So one of the legs of our our uh, projects of this initiative is a program called Honoring Choices Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. It was started by a woman called Ellen DPO. Her name is Ellen DPOLA, if I pronounce That's it right, that. Yeah. And she, by trade, correct me if I'm wrong, is an attorney. She's a lawyer. Yep. yep. Lives um, in Weston. And so she started this program in essence with the belief that everyone should have a health care proxy, should have um, a personal directive, which although not a legally binding document, talks about kind of what do I want in terms how of my, how do yep. I want to be treated, yep. not just in my end of days, but as I'm getting to my end of days. Right. And and also so important is to have conversation, take that, you know, those are documents, if you will, but have the conversation about that with your primary care physician and with not only maybe your your proxy, but those, you know, your loved ones and with your the family. Kids. Exactly, exactly. Not right. easy conversations to have. But what so what happened was so I went through training, so I'm a um, honoring choices facilitator. Yeah. And 
Yes. And we're actually one of the, Myrick is one of the community partners statewide on this, right. together with the Secretary of Environmental Affairs and or environment, or Elder Affairs yeah. and a number yep. of others. Yep, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, so by, by participating in that training, we can then take that program and the toolkit and bring it to Westboro. And so what we envision, and Arthur, you and I have talked about this, is that um, we want to go out and actively find individuals in the community. This is not sort of a passive thing. Actively find in a professional way right. uh, those, and we're sort of looking at those over the age of 70 who, and make sure they have a health care proxy, make sure they have the personal directive. Right. And most importantly, because those things, by the way, don't need to be completed by an attorney. Sorry. Exactly. That's not no, exactly time. right. You don't need a big form. No, you no, don't, no, 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 exactly. And these forms are accepted in Massachusetts that come as part of the toolkit. Right. So the idea is to provide education to these individuals in the community and then to be able to offer forms, maybe workshops, we're still working through the details, yeah. to then complete the forms and then say, go have the conversation with, as we have already talked about. The beauty of this, too, is that we're not only looking at those 70 and over because... By the way, moms and dads, if your child is going off to school and they're over the age of 18. Uh, th this being the day before graduation here. Right, And moms right, and dads exactly, are thinking about right? this. Right. Your child needs your child, your adult child, I guess, right? If they're 18, they need to have a health care proxy when they go away to school. They, you know, personal directive, you know, yeah, they're young, they're sort of invincible, et cetera, or they think they are. But that's an important piece, piece. to have. Exactly. Right. And, and they need to have somebody that, if there is an accident there, that somebody Absolutely. can, because otherwise they can't call anybody. They can't, because they they're just kind of like you can't see the grades, right? Because you're an adult. Right? You can't see, right? That's right. right. You can't. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So it's a big deal. So this involvement of the kids, I think, yeah. And I think you had also talked about having the kids actually involved also in going out to some of the seniors. Exactly, right? exactly. And, you, and I've, I've, seen, I've even seen, you know, I know the list where we've been talking mm -hmm. about the fact that it's a defined project. Mm -hmm. There's like 1,800 yep. seniors and mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. people over 70. Yep. And, Absolutely. And so we try to get. So to we them. want to reach out to them, and and you know we've had initiated the conversation with Amber Bach, our superintendent, about yep. how do we engage with those rising seniors, so those yes. who will be seniors next year, to yes. bring this program and education to them, make their parents aware, and so that they now have this information and they can kind of send them off, we toss the cap and gown, and know that we've got you know we've got the paperwork. And um, we know that we want to initiate that in September, the start of the absolutely. school year. So we're going to right. figure this Keep out doing during all the, the work summer. In the summer. And as I said, I want Myrick O'Connell is going to be really involved in this. This yep. is a really, really important. It's the Absolutely. first community I know yep. where, where, they're, where you're actually going out to the folks mm -hmm. and trying to right. enlist as opposed right. to just doing a few seminars. Right. Really important right. program. And if anyone else wants to participate in that, we're welcome because we're going to need hands on deck. Speaking of yes. which, you know, as we discussed at, sure. at the beginning, so we're, so we're going to have a, a thing, whatever they call Below. it, a, bu a, a right bullet here. thing down right. there right. or up there. Yeah. Right. Maybe they'll be holding <laughs> I it. I don't know. Right. So giving you the information where you can reach Shelby yep. and reach the group Absolutely. if you want to be involved in this. I don't know any community where there's more kind of sense of community participation than there is in Westboro. Yeah. So I think it's just terrific. We're going to be, and thank you to Westboro Cable, we're yes. going to be doing these shows monthly for this year. The goal is going to be that throughout this process, we're going to be updating you, having you learn about other people that are doing this here in town and in other towns. And then hopefully by next year, the week before graduation, yeah. we can talk about all the people who have done their health care proxies. Absolutely. Really focus. On, thanks a million. This, this is, is going to be a lot of fun. This is a lot this of fun. Next time, bring me a coffee. And if you you're please? interested in coming and you're thin, um, we'll, we'll, <laughs> we may invite you to a show. Or well, maybe we'll that, get thinner. Or we'll get. <laughs> oh no, I'm too old for thinner. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. We'll look forward to seeing you next month. This is our June show. We'll look forward to seeing you in July. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you.